praise the Lord, to overpower you or to make you feel, amen, that you have to go back sometime. And really, you are actually free from it. Yeah. But the devil plays the games, amen, around your head to make you feel that you need that every so often. Yeah. Right. So he can tie you back down. Even though you're free, he tries to make you feel the emotional effects of it, amen, and make you still feel like that is, you're still under the curse yeah. of that which you were before. Yeah. Sometimes you have to just look out. And you just have to stand up and declare, I'm free. Come on, yes, somebody. Yes, yes. And amen, tell that demon of hell that you're going to stand no matter what goes on. Yes. Fighting to be free or fighting in the atmosphere of freedom, amen, praise the Lord, can be confusing for others. Amen, praise the Lord, because you don't necessarily feel that you have to fight in freedom. You think freedom is something that you ought to walk in and it ought to just be there for you. And, and amen, you could just stand there and say, I'm free and nothing else is going to affect you. All right. But in order to have freedom, there are grounds for which amen attacks you to bring you back up under bondage. Yeah. Paul describes and says, amen, there's a war in my members. Yeah. Amen, the law of that war is trying to bring me back under, amen, the places of where I am. I am free because of the law of free, but in freedom. But amen, still there's something that keeps pulling on me that tells me I cannot be free. Come on, come amen. On. And so you have to keep on battling with you, the spirit and the flesh warring against each other, constantly fighting and saying to the next side, yeah, I'm bringing him back. And the other side is saying, no way you're going to bring him back. I freed him. You're not taking him back. And the other side said, oh, yes, I'm going to get him in an area. I'm going to trap him, and he's going to come back, amen, to where I am. Okay. Amen. Just constantly trying to pull you down. Amen. Do you believe that there is, amen, an atmosphere out there that's hostile to you being free from the things you are? Okay. There's an atmosphere out there that's constantly battling. I shouldn't say out there. I should just say in the midst of here. That there is an atmosphere, amen, constantly trying to bring us back under subjection to the, the narrow personality of the lifestyle in the world. Come on, somebody. Right. We have to understand that things are better. Somebody said things are better now. <laughs> Understanding that many conflicts only hinder us, amen, not necessarily, amen, to bring us in a place that we're not capable but only to bring out the resources that are in us to identify the strength or the potentials. Amen, praise God, so that we can reach in the max side, the maxes of everything there is of our desire to live. It is not necessarily that every time you are in the, in, in the areas of a fight or a hindrance or something that is working against your life, it's not necessarily uh, trying to pull you down, but simply to make you use the resources that you know are true yeah. to you. Yeah. Sometimes you don't realize what abilities you have. Sometimes you don't really realize what strength you have. Right. Amen, praise the Lord. And something has to come in there and test the abilities that you have to make you understand that you can actually move from one stage yes. to another. Yes. The potentials that lie in you sometimes are dormant. Amen. Closed down. Shut down. Praise God. And you're not actually letting yourself be as free as you are supposed to be. Yes. You don't hear what I'm yes. saying. Yes. You're just continually living in a stage and somebody help me say, forget about the past. <laughs> Sometimes you are living in the past so much until you cannot see the potential that you have to rise to the next level. Okay. Amen. Every time you look around, something is hindering you from the past. It's not there necessarily to hinder you. It is to make you understand that as long as you're pulling on these things, they're going to keep you down. It's time for you to use something to get you out of your past so you can see the future. Come on, somebody. It's time for me to get up from where I am and experience something better than what I have going on. Get tired of looking at yourself in the past. Come on, somebody. Yeah. You don't hear me. You ought to get tired of seeing the scars, the bruises, amen, the criticism for which you've been in, and the people, amen, praise God, that are constantly attacking you, and you're over there reflecting on everything they've done, and you don't realize that as long as you are still there you're never going to have the opportunity to live you're going to be hindered every day of your life right. listen to me the enemy takes those things and keep you affected so your emotions amen will drive you rather than the truth and the reality of who you are come on somebody Amen. Mortal combat teaches us, amen, praise 
is uh, that the enemy infiltrates uh, or the infiltration of your enemy comes about to take you over before he ever get there to actually take you over. Yeah. Amen. He sends something in there, praise God, to mess with your mind or to cause delusions or cause even atmospheres, praise God, where you don't even see straight. Just kind of infiltrating it by messages, amen, praise God, and something talking to your mind and keeping you all crazy so that he can come in eventually and take over your territory. When he gets you vulnerable to the attacks, gets you vulnerable to the information that he's sending you, gets you vulnerable to the mind trips, amen, and the zones for which you are living in, then he can walk in there and rip you off of everything you got. And he'll come in and you won't even see him. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. The Bible says in the book of John 10, 10, which is one of my favorite scriptures, and it says the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy in an ultimate finish line, in an ultimate finish stage. He does not just come to attack the areas, amen, and just let them lie dormant or sweep the ground until it just looks pretty. He does not come and just, wait, man, make the limbs lay down, but what he does is he cometh in to take out, amen, he cometh in, praise God, to start, amen, destroying the pattern for which it is and then takes away the whole ultimate scenery until after a while there's nothing to remember. Amen. Praise the Lord. When you get to the place where you can't remember that God has done something in your life, amen, after a while, you'll walk away from it. There's one young lady, praise God, when everything had went crazy for her, someone asked her, amen, do you remember all that the Lord had done for you? She simply replied and says, amen, he really haven't done that much. Amen. Praise the Lord. You don't remember when he healed your children? You don't remember when he protected your family? She said, really, I don't see very much of what the Lord has done for me. And finally, the devil sweeped her off her feet. Amen. And took her completely out of what the church was all about. Yeah. Amen. And so what he does is he plays with you until he gets you into atmospheres. Amen. So that you can understand. Amen. He's just wiping you out. Not trying to let you live at any corner. Every corner must be dark. Every corner must be empty. Or the atmosphere you go in, they got to have the same kind of personality that you go into. Or that you are into. He got to get you around the same people that's thinking the way you are thinking. He's got to get you involved in the same atmosphere that the way you are right now. If you're negative, he wants you to be as negative as possible. And in the atmosphere of those who are negative around you, so he can come in and do the ultimate job on you. He wants to clean your until there's no praying ground around you. Until you cannot see God anymore. Until you can smell the scenery of what God has meant to you or what God actually is in your life. But Jesus said, I come that you might have life. And that you might have it more abundantly. He said, I don't want you to just, amen, to be just alive. But I want to fill your life with every possible angle that there is. So you can go into the next stage. He said, amen, even though the devil want to rob you. If you could just believe in me, there are better things coming in your direction. Amen, praise God. Bondage simply destroys the person's ability to see the area, amen, of his or her life. Amen, and the strength which, amen, that is supposed to be given to him to believe and have faith in the God for which he serves. For what bondage does is rip the person apart and destroys, amen, everything he thought about of what God could do to him. In other words, when you are in captivity, you feel, amen, just clothes or claustrophobia becomes something that pulls you together and you paranoid of the things that are around you until you cannot see the actual truth of what is really there for you. You're not really that tight. He just feels like you're tight. And the enemy says, amen, I got you where I want you at. Because if you're paranoid of your surroundings, you will soon run from the reality of the thing that's true in your heart. If you rain man become paranoid of what is real to you, amen, you won't use it or you will not allow it to work with you. Well, I thought y'all was going to let me preach this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. As long as you are bound, the enemy knows he can destroy everything that would ever planned in your future. Amen. Everything you thought you could do in potential, amen, he will soon have you at a place where you believe you can never rise to the fullness of who you are. Amen. After a while, you'll say, I can't do it. Have you ever heard somebody say that? I can't do that. And you know they have the capabilities. You know they have the strength to do it. But they're so whipped out by the hand of the enemy. 
enemy until they're frustrated and they're so tired they'll try to scramble 